we are going to show you our favorite recipes that we sort of um, either resort to if we don't have much time or mm. if um if if we just need a quick meal mid midweek meals meals with the family um we'll go through um all the recipes so i'll tell you what we're going to do emma is going to do some homemade baked beans claire is going to do some meatballs i'm going to do some quick flatbreads and a veggie cape malay curry eleanor is going to do some steamed garlic prawns um sarah's going to do some quick noodles and um some of these recipes are from the meals in minutes collection others are just quick meals so i think the first thing we'll do is we'll go to emma who is going okay. to bake beans um, i am i'm going to kick off by uh, showing you how to make a quick version of Boston baked beans. And I want to uh, encourage you to think about using uh, your own um, beans from your store, store cupboard ingredients. Uh, beans, as you know, are part of the pulses group. They've got loads of health benefits for eating them and they can have a, a positive effect on your cardiovascular system and so on. And they're high in protein too. So it's a really good choice if you want a vegetarian meal. And uh, my That's recipe is rich. Can you hear me all right? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Lovely. Uh, so, so you, you know, Heinz baked beans are quite a good choice, um, but they, you know, they can be a little bit high in salt or sugar. You know, salt, um, if you have a bit too much in the long term, can contribute to high blood pressure. So you, we all need to be watching our salt. And of course, you know, if, you, if you're eating things that are a bit sweet, you feed that uh, need for sugary things. And they're just empty calories, really. It's energy, um, but you, you don't really need so much sweetness. So if you are looking for store cupboard ingredients uh, for baked beans, buy, buy uh, baked beans and, and make a note of the, um, of the sugar and salt content. Um, so primarily I'm doing baked beans because beans are so tasty and, and can be tasty when eaten with tomatoes. And, um, and also I used to do a tomato sauce with beans quite regularly for the family before I had a thermomix, but this hands up, uh, you know, hands, this is my favorite way to cook uh, the tomato sauce. It's so, so, so tasty. And tomatoes, of course, are really good for you. They're full of uh, lycopene, which has also got lots of um, health benefits. So without further ado, I'll just crack on. I've started the recipe. It's called Baked Beans. It says it cooks in about 25 minutes. Um, and I don't want to show you all of the operations because it really is a simple thermomix um, recipe. I've put, it says 120 grams of onions therein, the garlic clove is in, 30 grams of olive oil, just going to measure that in. Emma, did you say, so as a baked bean recipe, is this one that, that I can um, fool my children into thinking they're baked beans? It, it tastes so much nicer than baked beans out of a can. It, it doesn't yeah. really taste like Heinz baked beans. You know, the yeah. tomato sauce in a can is completely smooth. This yeah. is, you know, this is like some tomato pasta sauce. Yeah. But everything, everything that you do in Thermomix is cooked to the nutritional oh. benefit and, and cooked so that the beans are absolutely lovely. So the, the beans are really tasty in it. So right. the olive oil has gone in and we're just going to do a teaspoon of, it says sweet paprika or smoked paprika. So you can make a choice there. And then put the lid on with the measuring cup in place and press next and five seconds on speed five. We'll just give that a whip. And don't skip, don't, don't go too fast, Emma, because then it'll be my turn and I'm not ready. <laughs> you get yourself ready because, you, you know, there's, I, I can talk until you want to be on, Claire. So I've, I've got a gin, I'm ready. Uh, uh, there's right. my picture. So that's just to show you the paprika and the oil are nicely mixed in with the chopped onions. And just take the jug off the thermomix to scrape it all down uh, so that it can cook on the uh, next setting. So press next. Pop the lid back on, measuring cup off, and a simmering basket on, and it's going to cook for four minutes on speed one. So a, so I was just telling you how great um, tomatoes are, and obviously this will apply to yours there as well, but um, tomatoes have got 
loads of lycopepine in them, which is an antioxidant that may protect you again, uh, protect against heart disease and some types of cancer. So, you know, even um, even tins of tomatoes have got ly lycopene in them. Um, and that's the great thing uh, about eating a variety of, of vegetables and uh, plants and different foods in your diet. You're getting um, you're getting the um, you're getting access to all the different nutrients and vitamins from different things. You know, the variety is key. Uh, tomatoes um, in the Thermomix recipes can be substituted between tins of tomatoes or, or fresh tomatoes. So if you've got a glut of tomatoes, um, things like the baked beans, uh, tomato pasta sauce, and use it for pizza toppings as well, serve it with meatballs, like Claire so said um, the sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, passata and uh, the tomato risotto uh, recipe on Cookadoo is a fantastic recipe to do. It uses mostly store covered ingredients. Um, use tomatoes tinned or fresh for making soups. Um, I, I use about three different recipes uh, with tomatoes on Cookadoo. No, sorry, four. Um, there, there's such variety um, um, within, within the, the particular tomato family. Um, and, and the beans, um, the, the beans contain iron and zinc. They're a good source of vitamin B um, and, and also vitamins such as folate. And it, that's why I was saying earlier that including beans and pulses in your diet uh, is associated with a lower cardiovascular risk. Um, I could go on and on about the health benefits of the beans. Um, and you, if, if, you make, if you want to make baked beans, and, and try them and do the taste test with the Heinz, you'll find that they're really quite different. But if you like the beans and the Heinz baked beans, you love tomatoes, you're not going to be disappointed. So you completely avoided, if I'd have been doing that recipe, I absolutely would have mentioned wind. I know I would have mentioned wind. Well, I'm leaving that, to, yeah, absolutely, for, an, for the bystanders to make that comment. Actually, I don't <laughs> seem to suffer from it too much, so maybe that's why it didn't come into my mind. Did you watch the Michael Mosley uh, program last week, The Wonders of the Human Body? He looked specifically at wind in humans, and apparently some of us make it up to a litre a day, and we have to get rid of it. So normally, uh, it's perfectly normal to have wind. <laughs> a litre, though? That sounds excessive. It's Who knew? Popular, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I hadn't asked now. Oh my God. They should put that on the back. <laughs> Anyway, no. I... There you go. Um, yeah, um, there are there are um, lots of reasons for having different kinds of beans in your store cupboard. Um, I looked online today and I got a top ten of beans and legumes. Um, I'm going to use four lotti beans in the baked bean recipe tonight, and they, um, you know, most beans have about thirty percent of your dietary requirement of protein for the day. Um, will be no surprise everybody talks about the magic of soybeans i probably wouldn't use soybeans and baked beans but they they have a, a massive whopping two-thirds of the dietary requirements of protein and the other beans that are that, um, that are really good you could use as a substitute if you don't have four lotti beans in this you could use kidney beans and haricot beans um pinto beans and black beans are, are really full of the benefits too so even with even with um, the baked beans recipe, you could vary. Um, mm. You could vary the beans that you use in your in your sauce. So the the, um, the cooking has been has finished. So just remind us, what have you just cooked? You've just put in. I've I've just cooked onion, garlic, and a teaspoon of, of sweet paprika, and I'm going to add uh, forty grams of molasses now. And I was literally just going to show you what I've decided to use. As molasses what do you use when the recipe says molasses i did a lot of research and i found that black treacle comes quite yep. close to molasses um it's a it's a to my mind i think i was thinking of a viscous you know a, something like malt uh malt um uh yep. treacle that you not malt treacle but malt that you buy in in a jar and it's sort of gloopy yep. so um it's I looked it up as well. It says that you could use brown sugar. Um, it says 40 grams of, of uh, molasses. So we'll, we'll put the treacle in. It's in the black treacle. There are lots of complex flavors in there. 
uh, and it's obviously derived from sugar refining. So um, if you're not going to use the treacle when you make the, the bean recipe, then you could use brown sugar, but you might, you might not. I, I have made this recipe and I used 40 grams of brown sugar, demerara sugar, and it was a really tasty um, bean recipe. Um, but make it once, try it, see what you like, and you could probably reduce down on actual sugar, because as I say, uh, treacle is not so sweet as sugar. So the recipe needs um, 40 grams of molasses and then a tablespoon of everybody's favorite um can you see it the worcestershire sauce the worcester sauce i, tr I trump your worcestershire sauce emma sorry did i trump your worcestershire sauce emma with two liters of worcestershire sauce you, you can, get yeah, there's i think i need a two liter bottle it's a great ingredient isn't it but there's recipes on cookie do to make your own which i've not done yet but i found it when i realized we had plums growing in the garden so you can make your own worcestershire sauce mm -hmm. well there's that that um unfortunately the squirrels seem to have eaten some of our plums over the last few days since i last looked but i'll um i'll check out i'll check out the recipe for must, uh, worcester sauce so I'm just adding the net, you, um, the, just to talk you through, I've put the molasses in, I've put a teaspoon of mustard in, I've put, um, um, I put the Worcester sauce in, I've got to add the two, the, the 800 grams of chopped tomatoes now, and then I'm going to cook again for, for 10 minutes, and then I'm going to add the, the beans that we've, the borlotti beans, and cook for 15 minutes. And that's how simple making this baked beans is. It's a, re it's a really tasty dish to serve on jacket potatoes or mop it up with Portuguese water bread or mop it up with the flatbreads that Jane's going to make today. Serve it with baked potatoes, um, sweet, you know, sweet potatoes or white potatoes. Um, serve it with grated cheese or, or serve it with potato wedges. Got loads of, loads of different ideas for meals there. So hopefully that's a help. And I maybe you'd like to move on, and I'll show you everything at the end. That's amazing. I just like that you used all those staples which you can use for other things, like when you said about soybeans. Soybeans I've always got in the cupboard to make soya milk because it's so cheap. It's like twenty one p a litre. And when you said about molasses, um, you can use molasses to make your own brown sugar as well, just white sugar and molasses sugar, so you don't have to pay for brown sugar. That's what I love about this. It's like all the ingredients that you use that then become your store cupboard, you can use for other things that you would never have thought, or I certainly would never have thought, to make things like brown sugar and, you know, things, store cupboard staples, basically. Yeah, and, and that really helps make sure that you turn them over in your home as well. So if yeah. you're using the black treacle to make, um, to make brown sugar, then you're, you know, you, you don't run that risk of it sitting in the back of your cupboard not being used until it comes around to Chris Christmas again. Or you know, we've now got a new recipe for the for the beans, which is great. Emma, but absolutely. Emma, Emma, there's a question. Do you use soaked dried beans or are they canned beans? I've used canned beans purely for um for the ease of use. I carry I don't um don't tend to soak beans and cook them uh, before using them in the recipes, but that's just because of my life and the, and the way it works. Um you know, you can always buy organic beans if you uh, in cans. The, 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 the process is safe. Um, it's, it's a personal choice. I think if you use dried beans, then, you know, you're, you're saving even more money. Okay, um, that, that was a question from Gavin. Thanks, Emma. Brilliant. And, and lastly, I haven't got the costings on here with me, but I did cost out the recipe. It was um, about £2.90 to make about three tins worth of beans in the recipe and you're looking at about one pound forty for a for a can of, of Heinz baked beans. So you you know you're getting a real saving and it's most of all you're away from the ultra processed foods and you and you've got all of those additional health savings. You can control the salt, you can control the sugar, you've just got a great um staple there. Amazing. Thank you Emma. Thank you. We're gonna Thanks go so much. And obviously you can add in extra spices for, med you know, for health reasons, whether it's a bit of cumin or, you know, ginger and things like that. Anyway, we'll, we'll um, yeah. come, well, we'll try and come back to you later. I'm not sure if we'll have time. We're going to you, Claire. Hit us oh, with the so basically what I'm saying is only take a minute and a half now. Excellent. Um, and just so that people know, because I don't know if you said it, you might have said it, I might have been off camera drinking gin. 
make sure you use the chat if you've got any questions as per the question that was just there and Jane is putting all the um, recipe links in the chat so if you like them you can copy them from there. Cool, oh, yeah. go hold. Yeah, I'm going. Right, so I'm doing meatballs in red pepper sauce. So we are a family of five. We all like um, meatballs. And this is our go-to meatball recipe, which I can do when my thermix is facing me. Might be slightly challenging today because I am slightly visually impaired, but I'm going to go with it and wing it and try and get it done in about 90 seconds. Right, I won't get it done in 90 seconds. So meatballs in red pepper sauce, which I have uh, costed out, that it's going to cost just about eight pounds for a meal for five for this recipe. So I'm gonna start cooking. It's really straightforward if anybody's not done it before and it uses the Varoma, which certainly I found with some of my customers, it's the sort of the bit of the thermomix that they don't use as often. And the reason why um, just tying in nicely to our cooking studio in Tring, we've got a class next week, which is all about the Varoma. So if you're free for that one, I'm sure Jane will pick up that at the end. That's one of the things that I wanted to focus on as well. A really nice recipe and using the Broma because it's one of the things that I don't, is underused in my opinion. So, lid off, I'm sure you, you definitely can't see the screen, so I'll just turn it. So it's just, again, place your onions in. So I pre-weighed it all generation going style. No, it's a generation going, Blue Peter, Blue Peter, wrong show. Uh, 150 grams of onion going straight in. Next, followed by, some bacon, which I chopped earlier, that's going straight in. I use scissors, not a knife for that one, because it's just quicker. Then, especially when you get it on the screen. Then it now says 40 grams of day old bread, which we rarely have in this house. Um, <laughs> it's a challenge, isn't it? <laughs> so I think everybody on this call all makes the Portuguese water bread. If you haven't made it before, please give it a go. It is without doubt probably the, the most used bread recipe in the UK by Thermomix Advisors. It's amazing. It costs about 70p to make it, but I've always got a knobby end left over. Because my children are fussy and don't like the knobby ends. So 40 grams of day old bread. I've cut off the crusts because that's what it tells me to do. But I keep the crusts because we use those the breadcrumbs as well so never waste anything with your permits. I've got stuff everywhere right so that's all the bread going in and so this is very similar to Emma's recipe it, it literally is just to put it all in chop it up maybe do a bit of sauteing make the meatballs make the sauce and Bob's your uncle. Two sprigs of flat I can't even say it fresh flat leaf parsley which at this time of the year is quite good because we can grow it the rest of the year comes from Sainsbury's. Uh, that goes in. Parmesan going straight in, 30 grams. And it is optional. So if you wanted to make this uh, without, you obviously can. So looking, at, uh, looking around, yeah. 30 grams of Parmesan, lid on. And then wait, five seconds, speed seven. We'll probably be cut off there a little bit, but Gavin, I'll ask her about the ground almonds. Do you mean instead of breadcrumbs? Because I imagine that would The question for you from Gavin, could you use ground almonds instead of breadcrumbs, instead of stale bread? Um, yeah, I like, only using it as a binding agent, so. And then that would make it gluten-free, wouldn't it? I'm uh, just looking at the rest of the ingredients. Yes, it would, yes. Or gluten-free bread, because again, you could make a gluten, if you're already a customer, I'm sure you will have seen, there is an amazing gluten-free artisan bread, which looks very similar to the Portuguese water bread, but obviously it's gluten-free. Um, but yeah, I would see no reason why you couldn't use the nuts because the, all the um, breadcrumbs are in there for is literally to bind it together. And it's also so. carb, isn't it? Which is, or higher, protein, which would be good. Yeah, then it's add the mints. My favourite topic, we were going to talk about mincing. So, I have, for this recipe, got pre-minced supermarket Sainsbury's mints. But if you wanted to use your own, you know, um, stew and steak or whatever, you literally need to put it in your freezer and you didn't have any mints, but you had some stew and steak or something like that in the freezer or whatever meat you could use. There is a recipe on Cookie Do which tells you how to mince your own meat. 
uh, which we use when we're making burgers as well, because you can make burgers. So I think the maximum was, yeah, 450 grams of whichever meat you're using. Pop it in the freezer for between 30 minutes to an hour. Then take it out, pop it in your Thermomix for 10 seconds, speed six, and then you'll have minced meat. So even if you haven't got pre-prepared, but you've got meat in the freezer, you can always have minced meat. Right, that's going straight in. And I can't see if there are any questions because, as I say, I can barely see the thing, let alone the screen. Right, that's going in. Uh, dried Italian herbs. Right, so what I've got in here, I don't know if you can see there, you watch me throw it all over. So I have got in there a teaspoon of Italian dried herbs, sweet paprika, half a teaspoon of salt, ground black pepper, all going in. And even though I've got it all prepared, it's a really quick recipe to do this one. On. 15 seconds. Now you can't see the screen here, but what this has done um, on the speed dial, where normally you would see the blade symbol, it's automatically changed to the reverse blade because it's just gonna, it, it doesn't want to mince that meat anymore. It just wants to bind everything together. So for 15 seconds on speed seven on reverse blade, it's just gonna mix it all together. So with the mincing of the meat, you can choose all sorts of different meat. And it's quite good if you've got that one lonely steak or the one lonely chicken breast in the freezer. Um, and you can look up various recipes for specific minced be uh, meat because the speed actually of which you mince it does change depending on the type of meat that you were using. And so in whatever that was, 15 seconds, that is now my meatball mixture, which is now saying to set aside because I will make that into meatballs while the sauce is cooking. So what I can't remember, Jane, is if I've got time to do that as well. I'm going to make the meatballs off camera, but um, it's not. Do you want to just do, you... do one? Shall I do one? Do one and then get the sauce going and then. Um... Get the sauce going. So literally, I'm sure you've all made meatballs. This is supposed to make, this is a recipe for four. It is a scalable recipe, so you can go down to two and up to six. But the recipe for four makes about 30 meatballs, which is fine for us. So it's like six each. So just, I never measure it. Just take out a handful and make a meatball. And then all it's going to ask me to do, which I will show you at some point. I'm sure Jane will come back to me. Um, it suggests in the recipe, so you use your Vroma and it wants you to use the Vroma tray and the um, basket to make 30 meatballs and then pop some on the top and some underneath. And then what's gonna happen is once we've done the sauce, which I'm gonna do now, everything's gonna steam all in one. So I will do the meatballs in a minute and just show you now. Obviously I could do the pre-clean, but we're very tight for time because we all like to chat. So I have transferred that to one side. We'll do that momentarily. Then clean and dry. Right, now we're gonna make the sauce, which is just as quick. So olive oil goes straight in. 20 grams. And again, I've got customers who are on Slimming World and they don't like to use olive oil, so they just replace the oil with water. So you can totally do that as well. 20 grams going in. Yeah. Then more onion, so 150 grams of onion. And again, don't forget, that's fine, a little bit extra, to save the onion skins as well. That all goes into your stock paste. So I'd never throw anything away. Uh, one garlic clove. Going in. Uh, sultanas. Sultanas are great. When I first did this recipe, I thought, oh, I don't really like fruit in um, cooking because it just reminds me of tagines and I don't like tagines. But all this is doing is adding the sweetness. So in the same way as I've now turned into a date freak and used dates in everything, this is just for sweetness. So you're not adding sugar, you're just adding natural sugar. So, and it's only 20 grams of sultanas going in. Also blended up as well. So you don't get yeah. the texture of the sultanas. Exactly. Mm. Um, I do try and always cook seasonally. This is about the only thing that I can um, grow successfully. 
So there's some of my lovely little homegrown tomatoes. So in the summer, I, I do always, like I said, have a glut of tomatoes, so I'll use those. The other benefit being, I don't need to chop them because they're the little baby ones. So, but you can use a mixture of these, tinned, you know, whatever you've got. So 100 grams of ripe tomatoes, straight to bin. Uh, mixing bowl lid on. Then 10 seconds, speed eight. Okay. I wasn't prepared to say anything then. Sorry, guys. <laughs> keep adding your recipes. Keep adding your recipes because um, I think it's really useful to us all to sh get a bit of inspiration from each other. Right. I just couldn't chop like that in 10 seconds. I think that's just mm. violated, which is great. So I don't even think this one says scrape down, but it just sort of turns into a habit. And I tell you, tin tomatoes just don't smell the same. I love fresh tomatoes. I love the smell of tomato vines, but anyway, that's enough about me. Um, right, so scrape down. Then the next ingredient, I do um, go off piste here because I only use vegetable stock in all of my recipes. I don't use chicken stock, meat stock, fish stock, anything, only vegetable stock because it's free. So what it's asking for is two to four teaspoons of chicken stock. As I say, I'm just using vegetable stock paste, which is, as I said, you know, I make 600 grams at a time. That cost me about 50p. That lasts me months, months and months. Scoopable from the fridge or the freezer, doesn't go off. 100% natural ingredients, whether it's onion skins or, what was that? I can't even remember. Oh, the stalks from the parsley. Don't usually add the breadcrumbs, but that's because I'm using that for something else. So basically just don't throw anything away. So stock paste goes straight in. And it's the biggest difference in flavor to your food. It's the one thing I would always recommend everybody to make. Uh, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Going in. Mary, Mary Lynn, uh, just unmute yourself and shout out, go for it. So if you tell us a question. I can't see. Keep, keep going me yeah okay <laughs> next ingredient 250 grams of roasted whole red peppers which you can um i've never actually used fresh red peppers for this i've only ever used the jarred ones so these are just jarred ones that are roasted and kept in oil but these are drained of oil just straight in and it's a mix of red and yellow and you can get these in any supermarket because i've certainly got them various Amazing. I always have those in the pantry. Yeah, exactly. 100 grams of water. Then lid on. Measuring cup out. Simmering basket on. And then that's going to cook at 120 degrees. Again, it's going to go on the reverse blade. For 10 minutes and while that sauce is cooking that's when I'm going to make the meatballs while you're doing other recipes and then maybe you'll come back to me but all I'm going to do I'll make the meatballs this will cook away and then it will ask me to put the Roma on top for uh, how long is it can't remember 12 minutes and then that's it dinner done and you can serve it with you know pita pasta whatever whatever you like really sandwiches so that would be me for now I'll put myself on mute I know you're all pleased about that. Stop smiling, Jane. And <laughs> come back to me later. But that's all there is to it. Meatballs, amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're very welcome. So Thank I'm going to do the quick flatbreads and I'm going to be quick. Um, oh, I suppose you need to see the thermomix. I forgot about that. Right. So these are brilliant. I think they make eight. Um, they're a great bread to make if you're in a rush and you, you just want a quick family meal um, to, feed, to feed everybody at the end of the day. So the first thing up is 350 grams of strong bread flour. So just pop that in. Now, actually, I will tell you, I the, the next meal, the next dish I'm going to do is the vegetarian curry. And the beginning of it is to make a spice blend. So I did that in the bowl. So it does have the leftover spices in it. 
Um, and I just thought there's no point in washing it up because it's all going to be eaten together and we'll probably add quite a nice bit of flavour to the bread. Um, so that's, you know, I'm a bit lazy like that, but I think that's the whole point of the thermix is to make things as easy as possible. So 350 grams of yogurt then goes in with the flatbread. Somebody um, put up there about favorite meal is like pasta with the ragu sauce. There are, uh, we did a few months ago about costings and how to save money with your Thermomix. And there are some amazing recipes. You can feed a family for four. I put it on my Instagram a while back um, for four days and it costs, and it was, it was things like pasta ragu. It was maybe um, a couple of pasta dishes, but it was less than 20 pounds. Sorry, somebody's coming in. It was less than 20 pounds to feed a family of four for four days. So whilst we know the Thermix is an investment, you can really save money with it, which is what we all try and do. So then one teaspoon of baking powder, that's half a teaspoon, so I'll just do two of those. And then one teaspoon of fine sea salt. So I've just got my pink salt, which I just use for everything. So I'm just gonna pop that in. Again, that's half a teaspoon. Click on next, um, half a teaspoon of sugar. So that goes in. And then measuring cup in. And we're just gonna mix it for 15 seconds. Don't know if you can hear me. And then I think we're gonna need it. So I'm just going to scrape the edges off. Just remember, top right of your screen, you've got that preview button. So whilst you're on a step that's taking a bit of time, you can press that preview button and it just tells you what's coming next. So I just knew that I was going to have to scrape it down. You can see it's just bound together. And then I'm just going to knead it um, for one minute. So the Thermomix is going to mimic that kneading. And then all I'm going to do is roll it out, divide it into eight, um, roll it into flat and then fry it on the frying pan. Um, but I'll do that off screen. I'm going to put it on to knead and then we'll go straight to Elna. So just uh, unmuting myself as well. Add spotlight. Over Thank to you. you. Thank you. I'll just turn that around. Um, so I'm also trying to use my um, Veroma dish more because I haven't used it enough. So Claire's right. I think it probably is quite an underused um, item in um, what we've got here with our Thermomix. Um, and this evening, I'm actually going to do steamed garlic prawns. Um, and one of the reasons why I like this recipe or I've learned today is that actually a lot of the Veroma dishes line... Um, you line it with baking paper. Um, and actually this recipe suggests that you actually get your baking paper before you use it, put it in some water as I'm doing here, squeeze it all together, make it wet, wring it, and then you open it up and you then put that inside your dish. And what it's done, it's made it all crinkly. So the steam will be able to come up through the um, holes of the dish a bit better. Um, I've then moved ahead with my recipe a little bit. Um, it's got vermicelli noodles. Um, so I've already weighed them. I've um, put them in the hot water and allowed them time just to soften up um, and then added a bit of soy sauce in with that. Um, so that now here, you can see in my broma, I've got my crinkly um, baking sheets, baking paper with the noodles and a bit of soy sauce on that. So that's all ready to go. Next bit I have to do is weigh in my raw prawns, which I've done here. Um, the recipe is for two, either as a main course or four as a starter. I've actually put a few more in because I'm feeding my family this evening. Um, so I put those in and then the recipe just suggests that you uh, weigh them in and then you just put them into the room and just put them on top of your prawns here, of your noodles here. So I'll just do that there. 
and we'll put that to one side um, while we make um, basically the seasoning to go on top. So we we'll start in here. I've already put a few of the ingredients in, but it wants six garlic cloves, quite a garlicky recipe. I've actually got four here, but they're the really big ones. So I'm just going to put those in. Um, half a, half to one fresh chili, again, de-seeded. Um, I've got a, just one, it's a big one. So again, that's going in. Um, a little bit of sugar I've put in there already. Um, some fish sauce I've already put in and then the ginger here and I weighed it earlier and I've just literally peeled it and cut it into these small rounds here and actually we as a family love ginger so I've put a little bit extra in as well so that's going in now all pre-weighed um the rice wine you can either use the uh, rice wine or you can use something sherry or um, the equivalent of which will hopefully be in your cupboard or the back of the cupboard somewhere, which I managed to find some today. Um, and then oyster sauce. And I've already put that in as well. Um, and then we now I have to mute as well while we do this. So if I put the lid on and the measuring cup in. And it's going to take it up to, for 10 seconds, take it up to speed eight um, and just chop it. So I am just going to mute that while that happens. The flavours of this sound amazing. I haven't actually done it, um, but I, I think it's it will be really good to see the Varoma between you and Claire, because I know so many of my customers are like, oh, I haven't used it. Um, but there are other recipes that are amazing with it. Oh, sorry scrambling at the door like the sort of steamed eggs on top um for the uh, the fried rice we were talking about so yeah don't be afraid to use the varoma just choose a recipe and the instructions are all there in front of you so just and actually it. jane i didn't i was because i'm quite new to this i didn't really understand how good the eggs are but again put the baking paper in put the just um break the eggs into it and then steam them for four minutes. And we had perfect eggs, eggs this morning. They were delicious. Got some chives from the garden, put them on. So I'm just scraping that down. You can see what I've got already. It's all minced. I think it's asking me to do it one more time. So Jane, you might have to take over with chatting again. Sorry about muting, Ella. The Zoom will just shut you off anyway. because the Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. I did wonder how um, Claire was doing that so well. I thought that's impressive. Okay, so 10 seconds again. So we were talking, we've got quite a few Zoom classes coming up that we've planned. They're probably about once a month. Um, so do keep tuned into our social media. Um, all advisors, maybe just put your handle in the chat as well so people can find you on social media. And then those in and around the Berkhamstead, Tring, Cheshire area, we're looking at doing weekly um, hands-on, face-to-face cooking classes in Tring. Um, as Claire said, next week we're talking about the multi-layered cooking, but then the week after it's going to be no waste. The week after that will be cakes for the Macmillan coffee morning. So do keep an eye on all our social media handles, please. That's brilliant. So now you can see just in... A few seconds i've got this really nice taste and it smells amazing as well it's got some really nice flavors in there and actually what you do then mum's coughing mum's next to me she's coughing it's quite spicy with the chili but you just put that uh, mixture over the prawns in your dish which i'm doing now and just coat the prawns in it lovely so you can see I've got this lovely red colouring going over my prawns there. And into the noodles. And then next is, so lucky enough to have two jugs to hand. So I've already put um, just plain water in there, 600 grams of water go in there. And we're setting up our cooking now of the prawns. So, put the lid on like that put just the raw ingredients on top in the um, aroma put the lid on there pretty quick i'd say um and that's then 12 minutes um just at um speed two and it will steam from there and hopefully by the end of 12 minutes we'll have a beautifully cooked 
um, garlic prawns, which will be great. Let me get that going. I'm definitely going to try this. And obviously, everybody, you know that you can always adjust the time. Like Eleanor might have put in a couple of extra prawns. If you yeah. find the prawns are a little bit underdone, just go back and steam for another two or five minutes. So you've got full control because um, obviously our ingredients do vary a little bit. Thank you. You're welcome. Just as a side, um, Jane, just before I go, once this is done, you put it onto a um, dish, but then it, the recipe is asking you to just put some oil in and just um, cook the oil for about a minute. And then you pour that over, which I think then gives the, the prawns a bit of a sizzle at the end. And then just put a sprinkle of spring onions over and you're good to go. Sounds amazing. Definitely adding that to my to-do list. Thank you. <laughs> cool stuff. All right, I'm going to come back to me and we're going to do this uh, Cape Malay, so an African-inspired vegetarian curry. Um, we're going to have this at home tomorrow, so it'll be interesting to see what the reaction is from my kids and husband when there's no meat. Um, so start cooking. Um, and we want... Right, so that was it. We were making the spice mix, actually, first up which I've done. So again, I love the Thermomix. You can add all your spices. We roasted them and then blended them just before we came in. So it's turmeric and it's cloves and it's fennel seeds and it's mustard seeds, cumin seeds, coriander seeds, ground ginger, peppercorns, cardamom pods, curry leaves, cinnamon stick, red chili. Um, we roasted those for five minutes and then we blended them. And so now I've got this also for subsequent meals. So I'm not going to use all of this today. So it means next time I make it, it will be even quicker. Um, so now we're going to go into making the actual curry. So 10 grams of olive oil. So I've just popped that in there. Click on next. Um, 100 grams of red onions. I've only got brown onions, which are also homegrown. So I'm, not, I'm just going to use those rather than go out and buy different ones um that's 100 grams and they're just quartered don't go over the top with chopping that's what your thermomix is for um one red pepper quartered one yellow pepper quartered um two garlic cloves now i use the blade cover peeler do you all have a blade cover peeler if you don't yes great stuff <laughs> if you don't let us know, host a demo and you get one for free. But I use the blade cover peeler to peel about 12 or 13 bulbs of garlic and then I put it in water, 100 grams of water, three grams of salt and leave it for three days. And then I've got jars of fermented garlic. So I've just got it ready to go as and when I need it. And it again, lasts for months. So it's just one of those little hassles, peeling your garlic, you don't have to deal with. Right, that's three seconds I'm gonna chop on speed five so just a rough chop and then scrape down with the spatula uh, paul is asking if i'm looking up this recipe later do i look for vegetarian curry no i think it's actually under cape malay so c-a-p-e and then m-a-l-a-y curry is it jay yes i'll put it up just now um that's it chopped Love the fact that we don't have to waste our life chopping. Um, this is going to go on for eight minutes. I won't keep you on for eight minutes. But after eight minutes, all we're going to do is add the florets of cauliflower. So I've got one cauliflower um, and then a tin, um, some salt, pepper, curry powder, because we've already roasted the curry powder, remember? Then at the end, we're going to add chickpeas. So I'll do all of that off camera. But again, you can see how quick it is, hands on time, how, how little hands on time you need. I'll post that recipe just now. But in the meantime, we're going to go to Sarah, um, who's going to do the quick fix noodles. Now, I hope I'm on the right uh, phone. Am I? Yes, there we go. Hi, Sarah. Hi, hi. Yes, I've taken the other one off. OK, so when I was asked to do something for Meals in Minutes, um, I tried to find the fastest recipe that I possibly could. And I came up with quick fix noodles. Uh, and it's literally going to take, I don't know, four minutes. Um, I think as a teenage meal, uh, I remember when I was a student eating a lot of pot noodles and things like that. So I just Googled, are bachelors, I'm looking at bachelors super noodles, good for you. <clears throat> and Google says the worrying thing is they recommend eating the whole pack as a snack. 
and it's 50, 522 calories. Uh, this is 400 calories and serves four. It's for me, it's a lunch, a snack really. And it's got 23 grams of fat, um, which I think is an awful lot. Also, I then looked at um, the ingredients. Now, where did I find the ingredients? Here we go. So what ingredients in super noodles? Well, I'm not gonna read them all out, um, but it always says if you can't pronounce them or you don't recognize the names, then it's not great. So really unhealthy. Whereas this, of course, is all fresh ingredients. So I'm gonna start cooking. I've got two very hungry people waiting for this. Um, so one to two fresh long uh, red chilies. I put three in because I often find that two is not enough. 20 grams of peanut oil, which is ground nut oil. I had to Google that, I'm a bit thick really. Um, I was in the supermarket and you'd never see peanut oil, so I sort of quickly did um, slug the peanut oil and it's ground nut oil. Okay, and then it's just going to chop the chilies in the oil for three seconds at speed six. Um, now, I usually, like Claire, I only ever use vegetable stock paste for everything. And of course, if you wanted this recipe to be total, totally veggie, then um, you would use the vegetable stock. But I felt it needed something sort of chickeny in it because it hasn't got any meat in it. And I wanted a bit more taste. So I actually made for the first time ever, where is it? The chicken stock myself, which I'll keep in the freezer. I haven't used it before. It does smell nice and chickeny. So I've got two good teaspoons of fat in. Stop paste, Tara. I think you like, like you said, if you want a bit of a meatier flavour when you're not cooking meat. Yeah. Good, yeah. I think so. I think I think it should enhance the flavour. So then we've got a carrot or two cut into cubes. Um, some onion flakes, two teaspoons of onion flakes. Where else we go? Teaspoon of granulated garlic. Whoops, <laughs> good teaspoon. Yeah, you know I'm always messy. I'm not drinking actually this week, so I'll be less messy than I am usually. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've never used, oh, where's it gone? Yeah, a nori sheet. I've never used one of those. Uh, my son came in and said, oh, are you making sushi? So obviously that's what it is. And I've broken it into pieces. It's, uh, it'll give extra flavor apparently, we will see. And I've got to put in a liter of boiling water. Thank goodness for the hot tap. I'm liking the fact that you've got product placement going on there, Sarah. So if, if Jane's already mentioned the um, blade cover and peeler, but if you didn't want that as a host gift, you took the 30 pound voucher. Look at those lovely magnetic spice jars on your on your windowsill. I know they're a bit dusty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, now, as always, going to pop on the simmering basket and speed two for two minutes. So while that's cooking, a little bit of excitement. Hold on. On the 14th of September, we're having a meet the advisor day. Um, I think I have got one of my local people on here. Hi, Maggie. Um, so I'm going to be on the quay in Appledore, in Devon, which I'm slightly worried about. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to be on there. But anyway, me and my family are going to be on there. And this is the plaque I received today from Millie. So we're going to have a little reveal. We all love a thermal mix pinny. So we've got a nice pink apron. I've got a table top. I know the rest of the team haven't seen this bit yet. Uh, so nice big green table top. Uh, what else? Okay, so some leaflets with visor pack. So all about recruitment, no doubt. There's a big recruitment driver at the moment. Um, oh. I've got all nice pens, three nice pens. Um, oh, they're all jealous. Hang on, they're yeah, you're all jealous. And um, oh, we've got some little, little, rather, well, uh, some little key rings. Please <laughs> open, Sarah. Yes, but I like the pens. I like the pens. I'm not giving those away. So if anybody is anywhere near Devon, Appledore, on the 14th of September, come and find me on the key. <laughs> Well done, Johnny. Oh, well done, Johnny. Yeah, Johnny, <laughs> Johnny on the camera. What would I do without him? So I think I've got 22 minutes left. 
seconds. Seconds, thank you. I'm going to put the noodles in now. Um, okay. So I didn't have vermicelli noodles. I've just got the fine egg noodles and I've broken them up into pieces. And it will be three minutes. So you might want to pop back to me, Jane, if I've got any left, because I'm going to be dishing this up. So, okay, let's pop the noodles in, broken into pieces. As I like gum, Jane, I've never made this before either. So mm -hmm. I'm really interested to see what it tastes like. I'm hoping it'll taste really good. I think I probably, if I was doing, if I'd thought about it, I'd have got some chicken to uh, add to it at the end. <clears throat> oh, now I couldn't find any snow peas, so I've just got some uh, asparagus here. I thought that would do. I don't really yeah. like beans. Oh, oyster sauce. Listen to me, are I still muted? No, Sarah. Yeah. I question. She said, "What time are you at Appledore?" Oh well, I'm going down um, late tomorrow or Friday. I think on the meet you the advisor. Oh, oh yeah, I'm going to be there. I think at twelve o'clock. Yeah, so I'd love somebody to come and talk to me because I'm going to feel very self-conscious. It's the start of our book week, so I'm hoping there'll be a few people around. Yeah, Maggie, go down and see her because she might get uh, carted off if she's not allowed there, so get there quick. <laughs> I think I mean, they're fairly lax. I think I'll probably be okay. And I will have things to eat on my, um, on my table. So now next, stirring with the spatula, the good old spatula. Oops. Okay, so this is going to be for three minutes, speed one. Everybody knows never to use another spatula other than a thermomix spatula, because without that flange, where would we be? Absolutely. And of course, it's on the reverse blade, so it's not going to chop all the noodles up. Can we come back to Sarah once that's cooked? Yeah, come back to me because it'll be cooked in about two and a half minutes and I'll have tasted it by then and I will um, keep my portion left to show you. I expect everybody else be eating the rest of it. So I'll cool. see you later. We'll come back to you. Claire, I was thinking maybe we could come to you and just talk about this recruitment drive and meet your advisor thing maybe and then I'll talk about the sensor and the host gift. Yeah, perfect. So as Sarah has already alluded to, we have a national, uh, which... I think he's turning global, actually, from what I read earlier. Thank you. Meet the local advisor day. So certainly in um, in the UK, I think in Turkey and Germany and France, we're doing it everywhere. And it's literally, it's not, it's it's nothing more than all of us as local advisors getting out there on the high street to meet the local community. So the local community know who we are, <laughs> whether to avoid us or come to us, um, that's up for debate. But it's just a really simple idea and I think it's such a good idea. So just get out there with a bright pink apron, a tablecloth, not necessarily cooking. I don't plan on cooking. I'm just going to pre-make some stuff and take it with me, probably some fudge, some lemonade, something like that. Um, and just show people what the Thermomix is and what it can do and talk to them about whether they'd like to um, join us and have this much fun and earn a Thermomix. Because that's how I think every single one of us are here today. We've all joined and we've all earned a Thermomix for free. But what the um, incredible thing is that they announced, they, that Vorwerk announced on Monday is that for the first time ever, you can join and earn a Thermomix with two sales. It's like just two sales. And not only that, <laughs> I can't believe it, I'm still speechless and that never happens as everybody will attest. You can, earn a Thermomix with two sales, you will also get the Thermomix sensor. You can see mine just there on the other, just there. And a limited edition carry bag. Now they've never done that. And it's just by introducing Thermomix to other people that you know, you know, whether it's neighbors, family, friends, just showing people we are not, we, we're direct sales, but we're not hard sell. We're just, you know, show people, why we love Thermomix, what it can do, what it can do for you, what, what it's done for us, because it's different for everybody. Um, and just get it out there and encourage people to come and join us because you know, we literally can't sell enough of these because we don't have enough people yet who 
know how amazing Thermomix is. So once they do through these Meet Your Local Advisor days, all the only commitment that we're asking for is that you come to our training session, which is every Wednesday in Ascot, one day, not, uh, 9.30 till four. So you see a demo, we take you through the systems that we use, you eat the food, which is the most important part. Um, and that's the only commitment we're asking. And you would literally take your Thermomix home with you at the end of the training. You take the carry bag home with you, you take the sensor home with you, then place those two sales in 30 days, you can keep that Thermomix and the bag and the sensor. And if you want to leave, you can leave. But that's what we all thought we were going to do. And here we are, four years later, still here. <laughs> and still loving it, still loving it because it's just fun. This is fun. Obviously I'm cooking my dinner and wearing my pajamas, but you don't know that. Um, and we do genuinely all have fun doing this job because it doesn't feel like a job when you work with your friends and it's about food and chatting and it just is, it, it's just fun. And as I say, this is the first time they've done it. And there are two options. So you can join and earn a Thermomix in two sales, but it would be the, the Thermomix that you get at the training, which would still, you'd still have a two year warranty on it, the same as all of us. Um, but you've also got the option to join and earn a brand new Thermomix if you made four sales. But you don't even need to make the decision whether you want to do after two sales or after four sales till the end of the 90 days, which is the full program. Anyway, the whole point being, go and meet your local advisor on the 14th of September or whenever their date is, if they can't do the 14th, and they will tell you everything you need to know. It's really simple. One day's training, no financial commitment. Just if you like eating, chatting and, you know, having fun, why wouldn't you join us? No, we sound like a cult. We're not a cult. We just like food. We are a bit of a cult, I think. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so I think the recruitment is going to be crazy. It's going to be uh, brilliant. What, I, what we also wanted to talk about is um, host gifts and referral gifts. So we used to have referral gifts and they took them away, which was frustrating for many of us because we know a lot of you are super busy and, and can't necessarily host demos. Um, but they are bringing the referral gift back for September. And what we have is it's a sensor. Anybody got the sensor? Wave at me. Cool, cool. Anybody not got the sensor? If you don't have sensor, it's an amazing, it's a new attachment, relatively new attachment for the Thermix. Um, and what's been brilliant is the TM6 is five years old and they keep bringing out additional parts to it, which has just made the therm the TM6 get better and better. So we've had the blade cover peeler, we've had the cutter this year, we've had the sensor at the end of last year and, and uh, adjustments to cookie do where we can input our own recipes, we can scale recipes. So we, we love all of that. Um, the sensor is a thermometer, a temperature probe that you put inside your, your meat, your cakes, your bread, and when the core temperature is exactly perfect, you'll get a ding dong and you take it out of the oven. So this is great if perhaps you're using a different cake tin to what it says in the recipe, if perhaps your oven is a little bit temperamental, mine is. Um, if you've got an argo and you're hedging your bets on how hot or how cold it is, it really takes the guesswork out. I, I totally love it. And what you get with it is you get, um, let's say you're making so I often do the lemon drizzle cake, but instead of a loaf tin, I'll use the bunt tin. Um, and then you can just pop the holder on the end and then you slip your uh, sensor in, make sure it's not touching the uh, edges or the bottom. So the temperature reading is, is um, of the cake. And basically that Bluetooth to your Thermomix in your app on your phone and ding dongs when you're ready. It's 129 pounds. You can get a 50 pound, 50% 50 discount if if you refer successfully refer a customer to any of us so something to bear in mind post gifts are still 30 pound vouchers or do give that um that johnny having a chat i can hear now i i know we've, we've just gone over the hour but i thought i would um quickly show you a little bit of cookie do if that's that okay quite useful um I find it quite useful to to have a, a look um this is cookie do can you see i've shared my screen tell me if you can't yeah uh so i just want to talk to you if you go into your profile talk to you about your um filters 
if you view profile and do the oh really <laughs> <laughs> is that your wi-fi well you're oh, still here aren't you <laughs> yes that's true oh man that's I love Zooms because it just happens. <laughs> I wanted to check your filters. And if you are not finding recipes that you think you should be finding, talk to your advisor. When you sign yeah. up, if you do any newbies, you'll automatically be limited to the United Kingdom recipes. My mm -hmm. advice to you is to go through the website, not through the app, look at the countries and either take off UK or add other countries. Australia is amazing. Um, and other countries with, with similar palettes are always good. If you speak a different language, add that language and add that country to get really authentic. Um, but equally, there, what I wanted to show you is the different way to um, search for recipes. So I you, like, you could search mixed beef and get a variety of amazing mixed beef recipes, including it literally mixed beef. Or you could search lasagna and then you get a variety of different lasagnas, whether it's vegetarian or chicken and spinach or minced beef. Um, but then what you can also do, which is what I did tonight, is put in meals in minutes and you click the little icon and change from recipes to collections and you can search in collections and you get all these different collections. And that could be vegetarian. It could be... Um, uh, Cocktails. Oh, fat. It could be Asian. You know, so there are so many different ways. So really do use Cookie Doo because it is incredible. Um, I think that was all I was going to say. Um, I is ever do you want to see all the recipes? Should we quickly? Um, off. Mine's actually honestly the gamuts are in, so they've been at it already. <laughs> um, but it, it's going down well, is it, girls? Mm, yeah, lovely. They're really enjoying it, so it doesn't look like very much now. But I've got there's my meatballs in red pepper sauce, so they're all steamed beautifully. Here, so I'm just turn it off because they're really hot. Those right. noodles are amazing, Sarah. Oh, loads of um meatballs, Claire. Mm -hmm. They good, Sarah. They're really good, and um, yeah, my two chaps are really enjoying them and have asked for a repeat, which surprises right. me because I wasn't sure how good they would be. Better than bachelors, anyway. Absolutely, much healthier. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. little face, Sarah. You weren't sure how good they were. Of course, they were good. Anyone want to see the baked beans? Because they're here. Of course. I've got a really dark, um, tomato-y, gorgeous, um, gorgeous stew. We, you know, it's taken 25 minutes total cooking here. And my son had them the other night and he said they were absolutely delicious. So they passed the teenage yeah, test as well. Um, and yeah, they're absolutely fantastic. Really great to have those. Do keep following our Facebook pages. We'll try and keep you updated. We hope you enjoyed today. Any questions, you know where we all are, hopefully. Come and see us on Saturday the 14th or potentially other days when we're out and about all over the country in our pink pinnies. Um, and come and see us in Tring as well. Yeah, remember, we've got our cooking classes in Tring. There'll be another Zoom class in about a month's time. And I can't remember what it was. Um, but Thank you for coming. Health. Oh, we're going to do a meeting in October. So we're going to talk about diabetes, ultra processed food, low fat, all of that sort of stuff. Um, so a very different take on it. But um, thanks for sharing your recipes with us. I'm going to certainly add a lot of those to my to do list and have a good September, everybody. Thanks for joining us.